It's now time for member statements. The member for University Rosedale. Oh, thank you, Speaker. I want to talk about Enrico Miranda. Enrico was a father and a grandfather. He was known for his kind smile. He grew up in the Philippines where he was trained as an engineer, and in Ontario he was a temporary employee for 10 years. On September 25, Enrico was crushed to death by a machine that he was cleaning at Fiera Foods. He was the fifth employee who's died at Fiera Foods since 1999, five people who shouldn't have had to die. For years, groups like the Workers' Action Centre in my riding of University Rosedale have been fighting for safer working conditions for temporary workers, because temporary workers are twice as likely as permanent employees to be injured at work, and 70 per cent of the workers at Fiera Foods are temporary workers. So if a worker is injured, Fiera doesn't have to pay the WSIB claim or have it on their record. The temp agency does. So this government has a choice. Make workplaces safer or make them more dangerous. So what has this government done? They've refused to, uh, to make companies like Fiera Foods face real penalties. They've reduced workplace safety inspectors. They've lowered safety training requirements. They've refused our call for a full public investigation. So when people go to work, they expect to come home. This government is not making it safer for people to come home. They are not making workplaces safer. And that's not right. I will continue to fight with workers to ensure we pass and enforce laws so that everyone is safe when they go to work. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Mississauga Streetsville. Good afternoon. Today, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all members of this House for the commitment, courage, long hours and vision that they bring to serve the people of Ontario. After spending time in our ridings over the summer, we were able to connect to the various community groups, local businesses and residents that gave us the privilege to represent them. From speaking to groups of Fortune 500 executives looking to invest in Ontario to opening a large early-on daycare centre, from wading in the Credit River touring the salmon facility, ensuring sufficient salmon population occurs, to visiting a fur auction facility in North Bay. From joining Lusso Charities where we provide funding for a snow zone room, which is significant for those with disabilities to attending the numerous ethnic events, including iftar dinners, Eid, Portuguese, Goan, Polish, Filipino, Hindu, Sikh, Croatian, Chinese, and many, many others. And not to forget the many wonderful food festivals. To the weddings, birthdays, new babies, christenings, retirements, and anniversaries, congratulations to you all. We host our own community barbecues, and at mine, we were able to present the first recipients of the Life Science Scholarship Program, my own initiative, where 20 students in first or second year university each receive $4,000 plus one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Mr. Speaker, we are truly privileged to be able to be the voice of our constituents, and I'd like to thank all the people here and the people of Ontario for their confidence in our government. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Beaches, East York. Thank you, Speaker. I'm excited to be back to voice the concerns of my constituents in Beaches, East York. The government's cuts continue to hurt Ontario and Ontarians. Its cuts to education at every level have been particularly cruel. Instead of a summer where parents, teachers, education workers and students could kick back and enjoy themselves, teachers and workers spent it worrying about their jobs and their ability to put food on the table. Students spent it worrying about their futures. I heard story after story of cancelled programs, overcrowded classrooms and diminished opportunities. I heard about a guidance counsellor who is now responsible for 10 different schools instead of the three or four they had previously. It is simply not possible to give students the support they need when you have those kinds of numbers. Once when I was out in community, two high school students approached me in complete desperation. In fact, one of them was in tears because the courses they need to graduate and apply for the post-secondary programs they want are no longer available. And one said, we're a low-income family, and with the cuts to OSAP, I don't even know how I'm going to manage to go to university. Destroying students' ability to get the education they need is both horrible for them and terrible economic and social policy. Here, here. They suffer, Ontario loses. The government's education cuts were as ill-conceived as all the other poor decisions it has been forced to reverse. It needs to reverse the education cuts now. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Haldeman Norfolk. Yeah, speaker, I, uh, I rise today to commend all those who do their part and volunteer so we can enjoy our local festivals, parades, and events. As the fall festival season and Thanksgiving wraps up, we're reminded of how blessed we are to live in areas for celebrating. Sometimes the simplest things in life can provide the boost we all need as a community. Over the past few months, I've been fortunate to participate in so many events in both Haldeman and Norfolk counties. Norfolk County Fair and Horse Show caps our fall season, and the weather couldn't have been better. Seven days of rides, music, demolition derbies, tractor pulls, horses, and other livestock. Warriors Day and Remembrance Day follow the celebration of our harvest bounty. Locally, I'm proud to say there are so many ceremonies to honor and remember the men and women who have served and continue to serve Canada during times of war, conflict, and peace. And soon, Christmas parades, church bazaars, the Salvation Army Kettle Campaign will begin in earnest and with enthusiasm. Speaker, uh, and I think this is very significant, over the coming winter months, so many dedicated organizers and volunteers will be hard at it, planning and preparing for yet another festival, another fair or parade season to ensure our local traditions, many of us hold dear, will continue to flourish and entertain. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Windsor to come see. Speaker, harness racing in Ontario is in big trouble. The Liberals messed it up big time, and the Ford Conservatives haven't fixed it. The people who run Woodbine have total control. They've eliminated funding for the Ontario Harness Horse Association. They're silencing their critics. The OHHA has represented horse people for the past 60 years. We value democracy here in this House, yet the breeders, trainers, drivers, owners and grooms aren't being allowed to democratically determine who they want to represent them. And, Speaker, the Conservatives have refused to get involved. That's not right. They promised they would, but they haven't kept that promise. Meanwhile, fees paid to those who run Woodbine and our land-based casinos have increased by more than $800 million. Wow. That's money that could have gone into health care and education instead of the pockets of the private sector. The net profit to the taxpayers has dropped by $170 million. That's an outrageous attack on our public treasury. The little guys in the gaming industry, those involved in harness racing, are getting the short end of the stick. They need immediate help from this government. Profits from gaming need to be examined and better distributed. The Premier needs to break the monopoly of Woodbine, insist on a democratic election for representatives of the harness horse industry, and he needs to do it now. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Ottawa South. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, last Monday, I tabled a bill on the name of our, my former colleague, uh, Ms. De Rosier, and it replaces the French language services with another bill, another act. Uh, the Francophonie uh, Language Services 2019. The Legislative Assembly works in both languages, French and English, and the regulations are bilingual. Uh, the administrative uh, staff uh, must be able to work in French, and the important decisions are in the two uh, languages. Uh, the, uh, Institutions provide languages in the two languages, and signage must be also in two languages. The municipalities can decide to operate bilingual, and the author's bilingual character is recognized. Uh, government organizations and institutions must be able to offer a French language service, and is what is very important. Uh, the F independent French language service commission is re-established. I, I know that a member, uh, another member, will present one new. I'm an impatient to uh, to see him. 
we need to protect the French Language Services Act uh, so as to protect the Francophony, and all members can work together to protect Francophony. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Mind Mr. Speaker. Statements. The member for Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today as we approach Remembrance Day to speak about two local initiatives designed to help ensure we never forget the sacrifices of our veterans. This past weekend, the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 507 in MacTeer unveiled their new cenotaph. The new structure replaces an aging and crumbling cenotaph, which had been in place for decades. Over the past year, this small community raised more than $30,000 to design and build this new memorial. The new cenotaph includes a plaque listing the names of all the local men and women who served in the First and Second World Wars. I want to congratulate Legion Branch 507 President Bruce Henn, members of the Legion and the community of MacTeer on having this new cenotaph ready for Remembrance Day. In another effort to ensure we remember those who fought for our freedoms, local historian Patrick Boyer has published a new book entitled Muskokans Fight the Great War, Striking Back for the Empire 1914-1918. I hope to attend one of his readings over the next few weeks, and I look forward to reading his book. I encourage everyone to do more than wear a poppy at this time of year. Take some time to attend a Remembrance Day service, stop at a cenotaph, or learn more about Canada's military history. Our veterans did their duty to protect our country. It is our duty to remember. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for London North Centre. Speaker, I recently toured Robarts Research Institute, part of the Schulich School of Medicine and Dentistry at Western University in my riding of London North Centre. London has an important history of medical innovation as the birthplace of insulin, the first human blood transfusion, the first brain MRI, to name a mere few. Robarts' interdisciplinary approach involves physicians, physicists, biologists, biomedical engineers, and so many more. Collaboration is key, with brilliant minds investigating heart disease and stroke, diabetes, Alzheimer's, and cancer. I was incredibly impressed by Dr. Fenster's work with 3D imaging and cancer treatment. Dr. Hegel has worked on genetics. He was the first to identify a genetic basis for many diseases. Dr. Paraga's lung imaging, showing the damaging effects of tobacco, cannabis, and vaping products. Dr. Um, Dr. Prado's work on Alzheimer's disease, Dr. Reeder on drug safety, Drs. Bartha and Kahn on neuroimaging, Dr. Peter's surgical st simulations, and Dr. Drangova's robotics and 3D printing for joint and tissue replacement. I'd like to thank all the scientists, researchers, students, and staff for your groundbreaking work at Robarts Research Institute. It's a state-of-the-art facility, and I wish you much success as you continue London's history of world-class research. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member from Mississauga Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's wonderful to be back in the House. Like many of my colleagues, I have had a busy summer attending events in the community and meeting with constituents. Some highlights included marking International Overdose Awareness Day with my naloxone poster campaign that I sent to all honourable members and celebrating Mississauga's own U.S. Open champion, the remarkable young woman, Bianca Andrescu. Yeah. While I did enjoy my summer, I was also hard at work with my colleague, the member from Cambridge, as we completed our consultation task force on combating human trafficking. Together with the new Associate Minister for Women and Children, we held 12 roundtables across this province where we listened to survivors, service providers, police enforcement, Francophone and Indigenous groups, and various stakeholders on this issue. Speaker, it has become clear to me as I worked on this issue. There is a lack of public awareness and education on this topic. Human trafficking is not something that happens in third world countries. It is something that is happening right here at home in Ontario. 93% of victims are Canadian born and as young as 12 to 14 years old. Last year, Minister McLeod called human trafficking Ontario's secret. It is now time the secret was out in the open. We must break the silos and work together across ministries and industries. That is why I am so pleased that we have engaged multiple ministers on this topic and our government is taking an interministerial approach. I also know that this is a priority issue for the Premier as he has recently announced an additional $6 million in funding to three priority crime areas, human trafficking being one of them. We must work across party lines and levels of government to put an end to this modern-day form of slavery. Human beings are not for sale. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to share with the House some of the very positive economic news in the province of Ontario, particularly with regards to the employment picture and the number of jobs created in recent months. As you know, Mr. Speaker, our government has been working nonstop to deliver real change and to keep our promises to the people of Ontario. Today, I can tell you that 85% of the total commitments we made to the people of Ontario have been completed or put into action, as we have implemented over 250 initiatives to date. As a result of this work, Mr. Speaker, we are delivering unprecedented results for taxpayers. Families, individuals, and businesses are all enjoying an improved outlook. Since we took office, Mr. Speaker, more than 270,000 jobs have been created. In fact, Mr. Speaker, employment in Ontario increased by 41,100 in September after increasing by 57,800 in August. <laughs> These two months represent the largest back-to-back -back monthly jobs gain on record, 98,900 new jobs. Our province's unemployment rate decreased to 5.3 per cent in September. Looking ahead, Mr. Speaker, Ontario's economy is expected to grow at a steady pace from 2019 to 2024. This is such a great news, Mr. Speaker, which I'm happy to share with the House today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this afternoon.